Welcome and thank you for joining. In this session, we'll explore exponential numbers and terms that contain rational exponents. As the name says it, these are simply exponential numbers, but the power will be in fraction form. So, rational or fractional exponent. In order to better understand how to operate with rational exponent numbers, we'll go over this very simple investigation that will bring us closer to how we operate with exponents and very special exponential numbers, and then we'll make connections with the rational exponents numbers. So, first we'll talk about the perfect power numbers. So, the perfect number uh, power numbers are created by bringing a number, and as an example, I brought in the numbers 1 to 10, to different powers. If you bring a number to the power of 2, all the answers or the numbers created, for example, 1 square is 1, 2 square is 4, 3 square is 9, 16, 4 square is 16. So all these numbers that are obtained by um, squaring another number are what we call perfect square numbers. In a similar way, we create the perfect cube numbers. So if we bring all numbers 1 to 10 to the power of 3, then the answers that we obtain are all perfect cube numbers. We're going to go one degree higher, perfect powers of 4. They're created in a similar way. So all these numbers that are created by bringing numbers 1 to 10 to the power of 4 are what we call perfect powers of 4. And one last one, perfect powers of 5, are created by bringing various numbers to power of 5. So the answers we obtain again, such as numbers 1, 32, 3 to the power 5, 243. So all these numbers that are created by bringing another number to the power of 5 are what we call perfect powers of 5 numbers. Now, perfect any power number is in the form a to the power of n. So next, we'll talk about a quite familiar concept from the uh, previous grades, which is the roots or the square roots of perfect powers. So first, we'll look into the perfect square numbers. And as examples, I chose numbers 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, and 81. So what we'll do is we'll square root all the perfect square numbers to see what we obtain. It's a very simple exercise for you probably, and you can do that mentally. But if you want to use the calculator, you will have to locate the square root button and then press the number that you are trying to square root and then press the equal sign after and you get the answer. So the square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 16 is 4. Square root 25 is 5, square root 36 is 6, square root 49 is 7, square root 64 is 8, and square root 81 is 9. Now next, we'll use the exact perfect powers of 2 or perfect squares that we used in the square roots exercise. And we'll bring them to the power of 1 over 2. Now, 1 over 2 is a rational power now. So let's take a look at what happens. If you want to do this in the calculator, please remember that you will have to type first the number 4. And then you have to type the power. In some calculators, the power appears in, in this symbol, and in some it appears like this. So get to know your calculator. And because your uh, power or exponent is in fraction form, uh, most of the time, in most calculators, you will have to use brackets because calculators do not recognize bad mass the way we do. So similarly, we say 9 to the power of a half, you get 3. If you try 16 to the power of 1 over 2, you get 4. 25 power 1 over 2 is 5. 36 power 1 over 2 is 6. 49 power 1 over 2 is 7. 64 power 1 over 2 is 8. And 81 to the power of 1 over 2 is 9. So the pattern that I wanted to think about, the pattern you know this here. And if you look at it very closely, remember that we square root it 4. And we brought 4 to the power of 1 over 2. So the answers we obtain from the operation applied to number 4 
either square root or power of 1 over 2 were the same. So again, we use the same numbers to operate on. So we square root it here. We brought the power 1 over 2 here. And we obtain the same answer. So square rooting here and bringing to the power of 1 over 2 gave us the same answer. Again, one more time I'll explain it. So square rooting number 16 or bringing number 16 to the power of 1 over 2 gave us the same answer. So operating on number 16 using a square root or a power of 1 over 2 gives the same answer. So you can see that the pattern is quite consistent. So in conclusion, we'll say that square root and power of 1 over 2 are the same operation. Now, we're going to try this idea on cubic numbers, or perfect powers of 3, just to test the idea or the pattern, because maybe this was a coincidence, and coincidences happen very often in math, so we want to make sure. So as examples, here I took the perfect cube numbers 8, 27, 64, 125 up to 729. So you see, this is the 5 to the power 3, 6 power 3, and so on. Now, what we'll do is we will cubic root. Sorry, I made a typo in here. I should have written cubic root in here. So we'll cubic root the numbers 8 to 729. So if we cubic root the third uh, number 8, we get 2. Cubic root 27, we get 3. Cubic root 64, we get 4. Cubic root of 125 is 5. The cubic root of 216 is 6. Cubic root of 343 is 7. Cubic root of 512 is 8. And lastly, cubic root of 729 is equal to 9. Now, in a similar way that we did before, we'll bring all these numbers that we have cubic rooted in the previous step to the power of, I want you to guess, 1 over 3. So number 8, so the same number 8 that we have in here, now, instead of cubic root, will be brought to the power of 1 over 3. And you can see that we already got the same answer. So let's test it on the next question. Now, we have 27 to the power 1 over 3. That's 3. 64 to the power 1 over 3 is 4. 125 power 1 over 3 is 5. 216 power 1 over 3 is 6. 343 power 1 over 3 is 7. 512 power 1 over 3 is 8, and 729 to the power 1 over 3 is 9. So as you can see, applying the same operation to the same, uh, applying uh, the cubic root operation to the same number and uh, the power of 1 over 3 uh, uh, gave us the same number. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, the pattern that we notice seems to be solid now, and we're going to say that the cubic root and the power of 1 over 3 are the same operation. So notice how this denominator in here is this number in here, in the root. Okay, So we're going to give them a name now. In conclusion, we're going to say that if we bring a, power, uh, a number to the power of 1 over n, then the answer will be that number inside the root with this little number in here, which does have a name and we'll talk about it right now. So rational exponent numbers or terms are nothing but root numbers. And from now on, we're not going to use the term root, but we'll use the term radical. We're going to say that this entire thing is a radical number. And this symbol right here is what we call a radical symbol. This little number in here is what we call the index, and the index will always be the denominator when the number is in exponential form. And the number that we have inside the radical, we call it by the fancy name radicand. If we want to extend this formula a little bit further, Say, for example, if we have an exponential number with rational power in the form m over n, so m is a number different than 1, unlike in here, then we'll break this down into m 
times 1 over n. So we're just breaking down a fraction, right, into two different terms. So remember that if you apply the power law the reverse way, this is the same as if we had a to the power of m to the power of 1 over n. So remember that the denominator will always go in the index. Whenever we have a fraction, it means that in the exponent, it means that the number can be written in radical form, and the radicand would be equal to a to the power of m. Another form of writing this will be the nth root of a, the entire thing, to the power of m. It applies the same way. So remember that a radical is the entire number, radical number, and the square root, the formally known squ uh, square root symbol, is actually the radical symbol, a radical sign, the expression inside the radical is called a radicand, and the denominator in the rational power is the index in the radical. Now let's take a look at some examples and see how we can convert numbers that are exponentials with rational exponents into radicals and vice versa. So we are given exponential numbers to the power of, this is 1 over 2. So in radical form, we're going to write the square root of 196. And whenever we have square root, we don't need to write the index because this is the smallest possible index that we can have. And it's similar to the idea when, of uh, having 2 to the power of 1. So we don't write the power of 1 because 1 is the smallest power that we can have. It's by convention. And if you use the calculator, then you get that the answer is 14. Next, we have negative 81 to the power of 1 over 4. So what that means is that we have the denominator 4 become index. The fact that we have a fraction in the denominator, it means that that's a radical. And then we have negative 81 inside it. If you use the calculator, the calculator will give you an error. So it's not possible to evaluate. And I want you to think, why isn't it possible to evaluate the fourth root of negative 81? Okay, so recall that 4 is an even index. Okay, so Whenever we have numbers raised to an even power, either positive or negative numbers, we always obtain positive. So the eventh root of negatives do not exist. Next, we have negative 16 to the power of 1 over 4. Now, be very careful with this negative. Remember that this is not brought to the power of 1 over 4, only 16 is to the power of 1 over 4. So when you write it in radical form, you have to write the minus outside the radical and then fourth root of 16. The fourth root of 16 is equal to positive 2, and with this minus, the answer will be negative 2. Next, we have 27 to the power 1 over 3. Remember, if we have a fraction in the, deno in the exponent, it means that we have a radical symbol. The denominator is the index. The number in the base, that's a radicand. And all you have to do is find this in the calculator. So find the third root of 27 there. And the third root of 27 will be 3. Next, we have negative 125 to the power of 1 over 3. So similar to the previous example, the negative in here is not brought to the power of 1 over 3. So we'll keep that negative outside the radical and then we'll take the third root of 125. And the answer is negative 5. So one more question. Negative 243 to the power 1 over 5 means that we have fraction means radical. Denominator 5, that's the index. Expression inside, that's the radicand. Use the calculator and you get the answer of negative Three. We'll continue with more examples in the next video. Thank you for learning with me. Bye for now.